is going to be, it's moving in the direction of being in the loop in all of the clubhouses. So right now we have um, a sheet, and this provides, it's in the back on the information table. So the boardroom, where GRF United Third hold their meetings, uh, that room is looped. The PC Club Learning Center, this is where they do the instruction, PC, uh, personal computer instruction. That room is looped. Uh, Clubhouse 2, the main ballroom and the two meeting rooms are both looped. Clubhouse 7 is looped. The other um, clubhouses, Clubhouse 3 has an infrared system. So you have to check out a device, wear a headphone or a neck loop. Um, that's true also for Clubhouse 5 and 6. Uh, and Clubhouse One. So when you use Telecoil in a hearing loop, you do not need to borrow anything. You just need to know how to change the program in your hearing instrument. If there is no hearing loop, if they have assistive listening devices, you need to check it out with the management, the Clubhouse supervisor. You need to give them your your ID in exchange, and then you get your ID back when you return it. Big advantage to having Telecoil and learning how to use it. So, um, we used to have meetings in Clubhouse One in the art room. And so, so we paid to have the room looped, but we didn't pay for permanent transmitter. I, I got word that they have approved to install the appropriate transmitter and connect it to the system. So very soon, the art room will be looped. And so what that means is um, when somebody is using the audio system in any of these places, you should be able to use your hearing loop. Now, there are some circumstances where it's not going to work. Let me give you an example. The PC Club had a picnic event in Clubhouse 2. Definitely has a, a wonderful hearing loop. But the karaoke DJ that was performing brought all of his own equipment, and it didn't connect with the audio equipment in Clubhouse 2. And so, no loop for that event. And that's going to happen whenever you hire in a band or whatever, and they want to use their own everything audio. So I'm going to try to see if we can't get more club presidents to talk to their entertainers, people, you know, to plug into the loop. And we're going to try to figure out a way to make it simple and easy and help people understand how to do that. But that's another day. Okay, so if you're a Laguna Woods resident, please pick up this little piece of paper because then it tells you where the accessibility is. And I'm going to call on Judy Mandel, who's one of our volunteers. She's got her hands raised up. Uh, but I want to say that if you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone to come to you. Thank you. I want to know what that is that you're wearing. What does it do? Okay. Oh, I don't really have enough time. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make it. Judy, I'm going to make this very short. This is a Quattro 4 light. Quattro 4 light. I use this to pair with my cell phone. I use my telecoils to hear my cell phone calls. So this, this is connected to my smartphone, and when my phone rings, I just tap the button and I say, hello. I make sure my T-coils are on. But it is paired with the T-coils. It has to be paired. The Quattro has to be paired with your smartphone. 
Yes. And this Quattro Four light is available uh, at no charge from California phones. You have to have a verified hearing loss. You have to complete um, the application, their application, and, um, and as, yeah, it has to be certified by your hearing provider. Uh, it could be a medical doctor and have them sign off on it, and then you can order it or pick it up in the showroom. Um, how many people have been to the showroom in Santa Ana? Okay, so I just want you to know the showroom has moved. It's now in orange. It's two blocks away. <laughs> it's not very far. Just be aware that that showroom has moved. And I'm going to be getting new application forms here, and uh, it'll have the uh, address on them. Okay, so let me get my notes. So I started a little early, and now we're definitely into it. Um, yeah, how many of you, of you are here for the first time? Yeah, I thought there was a, I thought there was a lot of people. Thank you, thank you for coming, um, and I think you'll get a lot out of it. So as you can see, we have. I have to fix the captions. I was in the middle of doing that. Okay. You're a little high, uh, or as, as I am a little high. Let's just see if I can do something. Can you could you do a full screen? It is full. It is because the. The top line, okay, it rolls off anyway. Okay, it just rolls off anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Um, I, really, <laughs> I really do try to make these meetings accessible by providing captions, hearing loop, and assistive technology. So everybody here should be able to hear and understand, but if you can't, you gotta let me know. We'll make it work for you. Okay. Um, Caption Call. Caption Call is a sponsor. Uh, at every meeting, they pay for Laura to come here. She's the court reporter with captioning training, and they, they pay her to caption, so they are a sponsor. Caption Call, as you can see the, the text moving, Caption call is a captioning phone, so it captions everything your caller is saying, almost perfectly in real time. There's a little delay, but if you get used to it, it, it you really don't notice it very much. The telephone is available at no charge from caption call. The service is paid, the captioning service is paid for by the federal government. This is part of a federal program. So um, every, as a matter of fact, every phone bill you get, whether it is uh, for a landline phone or your, or your cell, cell phone has a little charge down tax at the bottom um, that's usually maybe 10 cents. So that goes into a fund that provides telecommunications equipment for people with disabilities. So not just hearing loss, also people with vision problems, dexterity, mobility, they, um, no, that's, that's California. <laughs> Cal uh, caption call just provides the caption phone. And um, so what is required is you have to have a landline phone. Absolutely. And you have to have internet. And you have to complete their application and have it signed by an audiologist, hearing aid dispenser, or a medical doctor. So that's our sponsor. I like to tell you about it. Oh, got a question over here. Let me come. I'm coming. Hi, Tom. Good to see you again. Your second time. Okay, so uh, a friend of ours was informed <coughs> that they needed a separate phone line for the house for the caption line. Is that correct? That's not correct. That's, that's not correct. 
It's, you, this plugs in as if it was an extension on the same phone line that you already have at home. I, I believe there's now an iPad version yeah. too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thanks, Ken. Um, Caption Call also has a um, captioning available on iPad. Only iPad, not an not an Android tablet. It has to be an uh, iPad, and it is not the iPhone. It is just the iPad. And that, too, is available at no charge. Um, you can download the app. You need to register, and they will give you a phone number, and you can, you can and still have to have Internet. Um, and you can dial, make phone calls, see the captions. Uh, it works very well. And Elaine had a question. There you go. Um, Tony, a really good feature of Caption Call that I have found is that you can save calls. You just press a little button and it will save the call. And oftentimes when you're on a call and if someone has an accent or it's difficult to understand them, it takes a while for your mind to process it. So when you have hung up talking to them, if you have pressed that button at the beginning of the call, you get the call saved, and then you can go over it again, and it helps to reinforce what they said. I think that's a very valuable feature of Caption Call. Thank you. I also want to say that um, back in 2011, 12, 13, and 14, I was installing Caption Call phones. If I, if I installed your Caption Call phone back there then, and you did not get a new version, you're entitled to it. The new version includes speakerphone and a built-in answering machine. Built-in answering machine. So uh, if you, that's easy to get your messages transcribed. Okay. We had a question back here. Yes. Is it necessary to have a landline if you're going to uh, try for the iPad? You do not need a landline with the iPad. You just need Wi-Fi. Wonderful. Thank wi -Fi. you. Wi-Fi. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And, you know, all the calls that you make on that iPad, you can call anywhere in the United States, Canada. Uh, there's no charge. So you don't have to worry about long distance. It's not connected at all to a landline phone or, or a cell phone. It's totally separate. Okay. So what... Does the iPad have a separate number? Yes, you'll get a phone number. You'll get a, a, a specific number assigned to you. Okay. Um. Tony. There's some announcements I need to make. Tony, we have one more question. Okay. I'm ready. The number, I didn't get it down. The telephone for the iPad... The telephone number. A telephone okay, number you. will be assigned to you. A permanent telephone number so that people can call you on that number. They will see that number when on caller ID when you call somebody else. I think she wants to know how to get it. Oh, how do you get it? You contact Caption Call. And just about every table, you'll see there's a brochure for Caption Call. So just pick up a brochure, um, and there's a flyer on the information table as well. And there's a, a telephone number and an email address. So either way, you can reach them. And please, if, if you are getting services for them, please tell them you heard about it at the Hearing Well Club so that... We don't get paid, or I mean, we get, <laughs> I want them to know that we're doing a good job advertising for them. Yes, Rick. Uh, recently, we changed our landline, a solid line, for the new coming uh, iPhone or, or kind of uh, line. Does it work? You know, the landline that was solid is now working as a, as a cell phone. But this is the house number. Does it work with the? Uh, uh... I don't 
know exactly what you're talking about. So could we be talking about Uma or Vonage no, uh, uh, or Magic Jack? No, we're not. We are on Verizon. But then we have some uh, uh, cell phones. Okay. But the house phone. You well, have Verizon Home Connect? Yes. Okay. And, and that works on the cellular system, but that is considered landline for the purposes of caption with, call. Does it work with the caption call? Yes. Thank you. Yes, it will. Thank you. Now we got another question. I, uh, I recently signed up for Inno Caption, okay. which is a cell phone service. Right. But what I find is it's very difficult to make connection because they're often quite busy. For instance, I could not make a call when yeah. the storms were going on in Florida and Texas. Thank you. I really, and I would be happy, if you email me, Tom, I'd be happy to converse with you about that. I really don't want to take up any more time talking, you know, getting off topic here. Otherwise, our presenter will not have enough time to present. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the things that I've been doing while I've been gone. I've been visiting all of the local theaters. I've been to Sedgestrom. I have been to Laguna Beach Playhouse, and I've been to South Coast Repertory. The purpose for my visits have been to talk to them about installing hearing loops in their theaters. And every, I did receive a positive reception from all of the people, but it's, it's always about budget and timing. So. Um, they're all looking into the possibility of putting hearing loops in those facilities. Sedgestrom really desperately needs it. Their sound system is very old. It's my understanding Long Beach Playhouse has a new FM system. That means you have to borrow a device. And uh, South Coast Repertory has a system that is, is as old as the system in our theater, which is over 20 years old. Very bad. So they need, they're looking to replace, so they're thinking now uh, about a hearing loop. So, um, what else have I done? I'm trying to stay out of trouble and stay busy working for people with hearing loss. Um, I want to tell you about, I put out an announcement in an email about the Department of Justice ruled for movie theater captioning and audio description to take effect. So what this means, the final rules for this were issued in November 2016, but it is now effective as of June the 2nd. And what this means is they have to provide captions at movie houses. There's and. If there's 10 or more people and you give them advance notice, you won't have to borrow a device. It'll be right on the screen. Right on the screen, just like TV. If you're used to using captions at home, captions on the TV are called closed captions because it's usually white letters in a black box, closed in a black box. In a movie theater, it would be open captions, which is just usually yellow text against the movie. Just transparent, or not completely transparent, but there's, there's, it's not in a box. So there's also Sony glasses that you can get at the Regal theaters. Those are special glasses you can wear. And those glasses will show you the captions. And there's CaptiView, which is you can get at the Regency. So Regency? Regency in Laguna Niguel that goes in your cup holder with a little visor, and the captions are there. So they're making it easier for us to go to the movies again. Has anybody tried any of those Sony glasses? Or, or CaptiView? OK. Yeah, it just makes the movie so much fun. So that's effective immediately, but you have to, um, for 10 or more people, they'll actually put the captions on the screen so you don't have to wear anything, check anything out, just watch.
the movie. And it has to be done in advance. I am going to go and get more information locally about what our local theaters are expecting and what they're prepared to provide, since this is rather new. OK. Um, Penny Flaherty uh, teaches lip reading uh, through the Saddleback Emeritus program, but she's also offering a signing exact English class. And I didn't bring any flyers, but there's, it's up on the bulletin board down there. If you're interested in learning sign language, this is not American sign language, this is actually um, alphabet, exact uh, alphabet. Is that how you describe it? <laughs> Signing exact English. So you, um, I would think my fingers would get really tired. Um. <laughs> OK. Anyway, so you'd have to contact Penny Flaherty. And there is information on that bulletin board back there. You can write it down. Question. And uh, Question. OK. difference is between the English captions and the ones that everybody uses. Why would you get not get the ones that everybody uses? Where, where is that English caption? So you're talking about subtitles versus captions? No. It says, and I read it because I was going to take the class. She doesn't teach the regular sign language. I don't know what the name of it is. American Sign Language. She doesn't teach that. She teaches something else it's called an English. But who uses that was my, because I didn't take the class. I didn't know. I would rather have the one that everybody uses. So I didn't know if you knew anything about that one. Um, that's a very good point, Ellen. And that's one of the reasons why I don't take it, because I don't have anybody to sign with. <laughs> OK. All right. Um, boy, that was. All right, so much for that. Um, in the back, we have lots of information about proprietary hearing aids. There's an article here that's actually in a professional magazine, the Hearing Review, the pitfalls of locked hearing aids. So when you're going to buy hearing aids, just be aware of the pitfalls, pros and cons of uh, proprietary hearing aids. And basically all that means is hearing aids that could only be programmed from the provider that you're getting them from, or another provider that sells that exact same brand and model. You cannot take it to an independent audiologist or hearing aid dispenser. You can't just take it anywhere. So be aware of that. Um, an, a couple new, for regulars here, a couple of new pieces of paper that I've, flyers I put out here. Some considerations before buying hearing aids. So if you're in the market for hearing aids. Also, I want that reminds me about, we are video recording all of our meetings. So Brian is our cameraman today. And uh, I want you to know, back in January of this year, I did a program called the Consumer's Guide to Purchasing Hearing Aids. And if you're in the market for hearing aids, I invite you to watch that. It's on YouTube. It's the Hearing Well Club channel. And if you go to the Hearing Well Club website, you can just click on the icon for YouTube and get right over there and find it. It was January 2018. So um, plenty of other wonderful topics to talk about as well. OK. Um, we're solely dependent upon uh, membership fees and donations. This is uh, my call for action. <laughs> donations. And our, our rent is coming up, and it's very expensive. Um, Laguna Woods does an awful lot to set up for this meeting, an awful lot. We have 100 chairs here. They look like you know, three quarters of them are full. And um, they set those up. They, they provide a projector. I provide my own projector. So I mean, they do a lot to, to help here. So, and they charge a lot. Um, <clears throat> videos, we did that. And I wanted to tell you, um, that's enough. OK. Da, 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 da. September the 19th. Lyra, you can close your ears. September the um, 19th, um, 
the Hearing Well Club is going to host an event for Cochlear Americas. Um, <laughs> and this, for Cochlear America recipients and people that are interested in getting a cochlear implant and want to know something about Cochlear Americas. So that's actually going to be September the 19th. That's next week. It's going to be in the community center in the Pine Room. And seating is limited, and you should RSVP. Um, I have I have a limited number of flyers. Is anybody interested in getting the information for that? Hmm? This is a this is for cochlear implant. And you already have a cochlear implant. You already have one. No, I'm just no, I'm just going to offer to pass them out if anybody needs it. Okay, so th th Joyce, here. If you could p pass it out to anybody who has their hands raised. So there is an RSVP address on there. Maeve Brown is the the representative who will be conducting this meeting, and you should RSVP to her. And before things get away from me, next month our meeting is going to be October the 9th. It's the second Tuesday of October. It's Audiology Awareness Month. Dr. Stephanie Rose from the House Ear Clinic in Orange will be presenting, and she's going to be talking about cognitive decline and hearing loss. There is a correlation, and one of the reasons why I constantly promote hearing aids, keep the center of the brain active, receiving sound, not only get your hearing aids, but wear them from the time you get up in the morning till you go to bed at night. Okay. Uh, we are, I, okay, so <laughs> Lyra has been waiting in the wings. <laughs> um, so Lyra, come on up here. She's going to be talking to us about cochlear implants, electrical, uh, electric acoustic stimulation, and vibrant sound bridge, Whew. Uh, which is a Im middle ear implant. Okay. Let me get rid of all of this. This is working, yeah. or, or, well. or you can have a wireless. Are you going to walk around? I was just going to stand here. Okay. Is, that, is that okay? All right. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm going to give myself a timer because I can talk on and on and on. So I will go ahead and time myself and make sure that I stay on topic and respect everybody's time. So my name is Lyra Replinger. I am an engagement manager for one of the cochlear implant companies. And the cochlear implant company that I represent is Medel Corporation. So I'm very excited to be here. I actually should have raised my hand when Tony asked who's here for the first time because I really am here for the first time. I know that she has worked to get me here before. I live in Denver, Colorado. I think I might have been snowed in that time of year, so we had to reschedule. But I'm really happy to be here and really delighted that you as a community have come together to support one another. So um, how many people here have cochlear implants? Raise your hand. Wonderful. How many people here are looking at getting a cochlear implant? Raise your hand. OK, great. So, one of the, so there's a couple things that we're going to discuss today. I definitely want to talk about Medell's philosophy about cochlear implantation, the technology updates. Technology moves so fast. Some of the things that you've read even last month have changed. And so I just want you guys, everybody in the room, to know what the newest technology is because since you're so active in your community and you guys help one another and support one another, it's not unlikely that somebody would come up to you and say, so what's the newest in cochlear implant technology or hearing aid technology? And I want you to have that information. And lastly, I want to talk about living with a cochlear implant or living with hearing loss. Because 
whether or not you have a device or a hearing aid, there are things that you can do to continue to make your hearing experience better. And so I definitely want to end with something that everyone can take away a little bit of knowledge. So as far as Medel goes, this is a picture of all the engagement managers across the United States. Um, I really work with some beautiful women, <laughs> young, beautiful women, um, and um, they are so knowledgeable in this arena, not because they've been trained a about cochlear implant technology, but because every single one of these ladies have a background in deaf and hard of hearing education, speech pathology, and audiology. That means we're looking at the whole picture when we're talking about hearing loss and hearing experience. So this is me right here. I cover the West region. I live in Denver, Colorado, and I cover from Alaska to Hawaii. Yes. And every time I say Hawaii, everyone's like, ooh. First of all, it's a really, really long flight. Secondly, I look Hawaiian, so I don't get any special treatment. So, you know, it's good and it's bad. <laughs> I want to talk briefly about the journey to getting a cochlear implant device because many of you in the room have gone through this journey and some of you are going through this journey. And so the way we define the journey to a cochlear implant, the first thing is awareness. We've been in that state where we didn't even know that there was technology, that there was a solution to our hearing loss. And this is what it looks like when you are in awareness mode. What? <laughs> so I have teenagers at home and this is how they communicate with me. Anybody else have teens, grandkids that just use these emojis to communicate with you? So this is the emoji that shows awareness. You're just eyes wide open and you didn't even know that there was a solution for your hearing loss. The next part is deciding. Do you guys know that cochlear implants is a consumer-based technology? That means it's up to you to find the device that fits with your lifestyle. In the United States, there are three FDA-approved cochlear implant manufacturers, and many clinics, especially in the orange area, counsel for all three device. So when you become a cochlear implant candidate, the first thing they tell you is, you choose. It's unprecedented. If I were to get a pacemaker or a knee replacement, the doctor doesn't hand out, you know, the three or four manufacturers I could choose from. I just say, you choose, doc. I trust you. But it's very different with a cochlear implant because each manufacturer has a philosophy and has features that could fit your lifestyle. Very much like when you're shopping for a car. You know, when when my mom used to shop for a car, she would count how many cup holders there were. And that would be, she would be sold. She was a very thirsty woman. So, so it just depends on the features that you like. So deciding really is you put on your nerd glasses and you dive in and you figure out how am I going to choose the device that fits my life, the device that I'm going to be married to for the rest of my life, basically, because that's where you will get all of your services and your upgrades. Then there's getting the device. I couldn't resist. It was a picture of a head wrap. How many of you guys had got, has had a cochlear implant? Raise your hand. This is what you look like afterwards, right? <laughs> you have a little head wrap and you go home and then you go for your post-op and they take it off. So, and lastly, there's living with your cochlear implant and your audiologist, Medel Corporation, the people in this room, this is what we want after your cochlear implant surgery and activation. We want you to have heart eyes emoji for hearing again. It does not happen overnight, but we want you to feel supported when that does happen. So in order to learn more about Medel technology, it's not just about what we do, it's about why we do it. So there's just a brief history that I'm gonna go through. Medel started and continues with this amazing woman. Her name is Ingeborg Hochmeyer, 
And in 1977, she was working as a medical engineer, and she hand-soldered the first multi-channel cochlear implant that was then implanted into um, a, a young lady at the time. So this woman is still the CEO of the only privately held company for cochlear implants. Privately held is huge because it means that she doesn't listen to shareholders. She doesn't listen to anybody else saying, hey, let's come out with the 2018 model. Let's come out with the 2019 model. She really thinks about the end user and making changes to what makes sense to the recipients. And so it's something that we've seen quite often in, in the philosophy of MedL. So her being our CEO still means a lot to how the company runs. In the United States, we're based out of Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Um, this means that the staff that is in-house in Raleigh, Durham, our customer service, our reimbursement staff, we have a key number of people that work West Coast hours in the East Coast. So they climb into the office at around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, everyone gives them a, sh a shady eye, and then they have to stay there until about seven o'clock at night, okay? But we, that's, our, that's our commitment to the West region. This is Ray Gamble. He is our CEO in North Carolina, and his background is audiology. He was a cochlear implant audiologist, and so his leadership in the company is also very important because he knows, um, he knows about the technology, he knows about the patients, and he knows about how important it is for our patients to do well. One of the things that Medel really prides itself on is believing that there, we have something for everyone, and what that means is everybody's cochlea in this room is just a little bit different. So when we talk about a cochlear implant, we wanna give our patients and our surgeons choices. Choices in which kind of electrode that they will use so that they, you can maximize the benefit of a cochlear implant. We call this our portfolio of products. You guys know what this looks like, right? This is a cochlear implant. No matter what manufacturer there exists in the United States and around the world, the cochlear implant really has two components. The internal piece that the surgeon surgically um, places into the cochlea, and then you heal for a month or so, and then there's the external piece. That's the part that looks like a bigger hearing aid. So no matter what company you choose, you're going to have those two options, okay? On this side, what does this look like? Looks a little bit like a hearing aid, but then it's also got this cochlear implant tech component to it. That's what we call the EAS system, electroacoustic system. When we say electro, that is the implant part because the implant gives you electrical stimulation to hear sound. Acoustic is the way you're hearing right now. So you combine the two and you get a little bit of implant and a little bit of hearing aid technology. What does this mean? This means that you, people in this room could be a candidate for this device because you do not have to be profoundly deaf in order to take advantage of this device. Sometimes there are people who are sitting in this critical window where they're not deaf enough to get a cochlear implant, but man, they're really struggling with their hearing aids, and they've been fitted for hearing aid after hearing aid, and there's just some things that they don't have access to. This could be a solution for you, and the surgeons and the clinics in the orange area are able to counsel for an electric acoustic system, okay? This is the inside of a cochlea. And do you see all of those little lines? Those are your hair cells. And depending on your hearing loss, you could have hair cells that are not functioning at all, or you could have hair cells that are still able to pick up some sounds and transmit it to the auditory nerve and then send it to the brain. At the end of the day, 
we hear with our brain. So preserving those hair cells and preserving that structure is really, really important to Medel. The cochlea at full size, we are, we're born with full size cochleas. I think that's absolutely amazing. The cochlea is the size of a baby aspirin. And inside that baby aspirin are two and a half turns that look like that. And that is where your electrode array has to go through in order to give you sound. So preserving that structure is really important for the young, but it's also important for the young at heart. Because again, for many of you that are here and that are possible cochlear implant candidates, you may have heard sound before. You may have had better access to sound. So Medell wants to be very, very um, gentle and soft when we talk about um, putting um, an electrode array inside the cochlea. So how do we do this? Because you're gonna stick something in there, it's probably going to be, um, it's probably not gonna be great, right? So how do we ensure this? One of the ways we ensure this is through the design of our electrode array. So what you have before you is at the very tip of the actual implant itself. There are 12 contact points, and you see how it goes from, oh, let me see if I can get this lots of wires to just a little bit. That means that the electrode array goes from like fat all the way down to skinny, okay? So at the entrance point, you have a smaller part of the electrode. And so once it starts to get inserted, it will be, it will be at the smallest point, okay? Those contact points right here, those contact points are the things that are the items that actually give electrical impulses so that you can perceive sound when the cochlear implant is activated. We call that flex tip technology. So with EAS, when you, we say electric acoustic stimulation, we're really looking at giving, putting in an electrode that maybe is just a tiny bit shorter than a, a full length electrode. That, that's because the, the internal part, the, most, the inner part of the cochlea still has some function. And so we don't want to damage that. We don't want to touch that piece. And so we have an, an electrode that's just a little bit shorter when it gets activated and we turn on the hearing aid properties, you'll be able to get some acoustic sensation and then also the implant sensation. And what this means is that people are using both technologies to get a better access and a better hearing experience. So with, electro, with the EAS system, we, we're talking about the Flex 24. 24 means it's 24 millimeters. That's a smaller, it's a shorter electrode length. So there was a study done with people who were not typical cochlear implant candidates. They were EAS candidates, which meant, you know, they, they could give, get some sensation of sound through their uh, through their hearing aids, but it wasn't enough and they wanted a better quality of life. And so through this study, they were able to get the EAS system, Medell's EAS system. And afterwards, this is what we found. We found that 97% of the participants um, demonstrated benefit. 97% were able to use the acoustic component. That means those hair cells were still intact and they were still working. 90% reported that communication was less difficult overall. That meant that they felt like there was a quality of life gain by having this device. 92% improved um, a better ability to hear in noisy environments. Can we just get an amen for that? Because noisy environments are just the worst. They're the worst for typical hearing. So to be able to have a device that allows you to participate in a noisy um, world, in a noisy room, is just, it's just huge. And I think that's the quality of life that we look for. 
Um, the EAS system is not the only system that takes um, hearing aid technology and cochlear implant technology. There are other systems that are out there. One of them you may have heard of is the hybrid. Um, and so in a open study that this, this literature can be found right there in um, the NIH, but in an open study, they found 97% had more out of gate success. That means they were able to get up and going and getting the results that they wanted more immediately. So going back to regular, te regular cochlear implant technology, let me get this up just a little bit. I might just have to hold this and then it's gonna look like I'm karaokeing and now you're all in trouble because <laughs> I'm Filipino and we like to karaoke. So, um, one of the things that makes Medel very, very unique is that its innovation is top notch. Um, being in the industry for almost eight years now, I've just seen that it's great to be able to have a choice because everybody just keeps upping their game. But one of the things that I've noticed is the chase towards Medel's technology. They're, they're always the first to come to the market with something totally innovative. And this time what they've done is um, really looked at the safety features. Who here has had an MRI scan? Raise your hand, yes. Mm -hmm. Me included. I, I was like completely fine until I turned 40 and it was like, you know, all went downhill from there. So, <laughs> um, what do we know about MRIs and magnets in the body? It can't be done. They go together like downhill skiing and taxes. They just don't go together. Don't do them at the same time. That was the case until Medel's technology came, came forth with a brand new magnet system. And that is the synchrony magnet. Every cochlear implant has an internal magnet. Okay, that is how the magnet on, in the inside and the magnet on the processor communicate when they, when they come together, that's how you hear sound, okay? So what's really innovative about the magnet inside of the synchrony system is that the polarities are side to side instead of top to bottom. When you have a top to bottom polarity, it's like a refrigerator magnet, right? It comes next to something else and then Yes. I was wondering, what is the percentage of correctness when you have surgery? Is it 100%, 50%, 90%? And what happens if it's not successful? Can it be removed and you're back to where you were before? Okay. Um, I'm not sure what you mean about success 80, 90. Are you talking about speech testing or perception tests? Sometimes it happens that it I'd like to know if it's always that you can improve with how you say, or sometimes whether it's totally nothing happened and you're worse than you were before. So as far as listening for sound. So in general. in general, in general. So in general, when you get your implant activated, if everything is in its right place and you have a good map, you're going to hear sounds that you have not heard with just your hearing aid. The, the trick is to make sure that you're habilitating that ear so that you can continue to make, um, to make meaning of the sounds. And that is different for everybody. I was wondering, is it always successful? Just don't so is it always successful and sometimes is it unsuccessful? So if you're talking about the surgery and you're talking about the activation, there are levels of success, but if you're talking about like a failure rate, an actual, an actual device that does not work, just like with any medical equipment, a pacemaker, um, anything like that, there is, there is going to be a risk, but that risk is very low. What I think she was looking for is, is there anyone who you put a cochlear implant in that does not get benefit and instead their hearing is worse? worse. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what she's yeah. asking. What's that percentage? I, I believe that that is a very low percentage. Yeah, I, 
I don't have that information as far as as far as just quality of life information. I think the other thing is that there's testing that is done to the auditory nerve about mm -hmm. how receptive it is to sound that they do before you become a candidate for the amplification. Correct. So they can give you an idea of the amount of success that you should be experiencing. But you're right, it's different from person to person. And it takes longer for some people than others. I've got two questions. Yes. One, do I need the water device if I take a shower? And two, how bad do you be before Medicare pays for it? So the first question, most people don't use their device in the shower because the shower is pretty quick. You can use the device you can use the device in the shower with the water wear if you choose to, but most people wait and use that for more of a, a sporting day or sporting activity, okay? And as far as Medicare goes, it really depends on the center um, and the clinic, yeah, and the plan. But it would be worth it to, to take advantage of the CI clinics, cochlear implant clinics in your area. I have a friend that went to the CI, and they said she wasn't deaf enough. Okay. <laughs> How long ago was that? Weeks. Just weeks ago? Okay. So it all depends upon the amount of hearing loss that you have and your comprehension ability. Mm -hmm. And it Are also... everybody's eligible for one. No, not everybody is no. eligible. No, 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 no. So no. you have to have a certain amount of hearing loss and comprehension issues. If a hearing aid can help you... For the most part, you're not a candidate for amplification. It's when the hearing aid is no longer effective and the quality of your life is being diminished that you're probably more the candidate for amplification mm -hmm. through a cochlear implant. Mm -hmm. So it's... It, you just answered my question. Thank absolutely, yes. Other question? 40%? Is it 40%? He's asking, is it 40% comprehension? No. He's asking, is it 40% 40 percent hearing loss? I don't believe so. Um, I, I don't believe it's at 40%. It really differs from each center. And also, it, it would benefit anyone who would be thinking of getting newer technology. Let's say you've had your hearing aids for a few years and you feel like, well, maybe I could get tested for a newer hearing aid. Um, you, could, you could go through the cochlear implant evaluation just to just to see if EAS or cochlear implant could be in your future. Mm -hmm. So, and I think most of people here understand the cochlear implant. Once you implant, it's permanent, right? It's it's not like it's a little tiny thing. I mean, it's it's a life changing event. And so, when you're ready, you are definitely ready, and the technology is advancing. Yet, if hearing aids can help you. You stay on the side of hearing aids to the point of when they can't. And then there's the hybrid and some of the other things. Yeah, exactly. Any other questions? Okay, great, Joyce. And I didn't have a question. Oh, I was just going to I have a, a copy of my latest audiology, my audiogram here. Uh, those who have um, implants, is yours? line reel down on the bottom of the audiogram. Mine starts here and dips down, and I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. Mm -hmm. I think that's a personal question, Joyce, to ask yeah. after. Mm -hmm. So with cochlear implant candidacy, it's severe to profound candidacy. Mm -hmm. So that's all, it's, it's, it's lower. Mm -hmm. Anything other than that, you would talk to your audiologist. Yes. So my audiogram in, in both ears started at the top and went all the way to the bottom. And I couldn't, he I couldn't hear with the best hearing aids. Couldn't comprehend. So in 2011, I had a, a Med-L cochlear implant. And so there's two pieces. There's the implant, which is under the skin buried down in there, that's permanent. 
And then there's the outer processor piece. So this is what collects the sound, and I'm gonna put this very simply. The sound travels in this little wire and goes through the magnet that's on the outside to the magnet on the inside and down the cochlea and then, and it, it happens so quickly, there's no loss of timing. I mean, it, it sounds slow, you know, just goes in here and it goes around there and it does that, but it happens split second. Split exactly. second, so. Exactly. So when I go, when I take a shower, I take my processor off. Mm -hmm. And the inside is not bothered. You have one implant? I have one implant. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have a hearing aid on the other side that helps give me a little balance. I do qualify for a cochlear implant on my other side. I'm just not there yet. Thank you. Tell them why you're not there yet, Tony because when you take it off, you have no... When, at night, when I take off my processor and my hearing aid, deaf. Deaf. My dog likes to bark and jump on my bed. I don't hear her barking. If she hears a coyote or a cat or something outside, and she's just yapping her fool head off, I don't hear it. And she could be just one foot away from me. That's how deaf I am. So, yes, Lynn. Money-wise, how long is it good for? Do you have to uh, pay more money after a period of years to replace parts? That's a, that's a really interesting question because I just got an email, I mean a snail mail from Medell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, really, the internal part is like forever until maybe you have an accident or you injure, injure yourself in that area or whatever, the processor, at some point, you may want to get a new one with new features or whatever, but it's always gonna be backwards compatible. So, so your internal piece, as long as it's healthy and undamaged, lasts you a lifetime. Mm -hmm. But the processor loses power? Well, I'm just saying, the insurance company pays for it all. Just like anything electronic, eventually they will go bad. You know, they get, they're exposed to moisture and heat and all kinds of things, so they might wear out. I've had this processor for quite some time now, so eight years. Well, when, when did it come out? Uh, about four years. Four years? Four okay. years. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and it's perfectly good. You take care of it. You know, you, you put it in a dehumidifier at night and you, you know, you take care of your instruments. You should be doing that to your hearing aid as well. And they will last longer. And are there batteries for yours at all? So Medicare does pay for batteries. Sometimes it's a reimbursing situation, but Medicare should pay for batteries. And uh, I use special cochlear implant batteries. And they also have rechargeable batteries and I sometimes I use those they don't last as long they only last for about eight hours so um, on the rechargeable uh, so then I have to swap it out for another rechargeable I have three or four you know batteries but um, but the other batteries last me a couple three days so sometimes that's more convenient yeah okay Fabulous. well I think I I wanted to I wanted to stop here because one of our my um, invited guests Jerry 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 wants to talk to you about his hearing aids. So where's Jerry? What happened to Jerry? Did he leave? Jerry Jerry Jerry? Huh? I don't know. What happened to Jerry? He's got high health innovations, hearing aids. He just really was so excited to talk about it, and he's not here. Yeah. I, met him at, I met him at another meeting, and he told me about it, and he wanted to come here and tell you about it. So um, oh, well. he's not here. Laura, thank you so much. You're so welcome. And we'll do this again another time. And um, any remaining questions? We're we'll just tie it up. I, I thought. Does anybody else have a story they want to share Can I just talk with my kids? about their hearing aids? Success, unsuccess? Um, questions? I have my nope. We had a great meeting today. Can I tell them I've got I've got 
about cards and so I have some cards and some contact pads here if anyone would like to take my card if you can e if you need to email me if you have any other questions I'm happy to talk with you regarding that and then the contact information as well thank you and just a reminder next month Dr. Stephanie Rose from House Ear Clinic will be speaking on cognitive decline and hearing loss, something that should concern everybody. Okay, thank you very much. Hope to see you next month. Don't forget to donate on your way out. <laughs> Members, turn in your name tag. And it snaps. It's like, oh, I want it. I'm attracted to that. When you have polarities that are side to side, in the presence of a magnetic field, it rotates and self-aligns so that there's no pulling, there's no heating up, there's no flipping of the magnet. Can you imagine a magnet flipping inside of an MRI machine? It's happened. It's happened because there are some, there are some instances where people needed an MRI and they didn't follow the FDA protocol. So with this magnet, you're able to get an MRI that withstands a 3.0 Tesla. And so the imaging of that is pretty, pretty good. And that's pretty standard within hospitals. So, you know, I've been preaching about MRI and it hasn't really affected me um, in any way as far as our technology goes. But over Labor Day weekend, I got a phone call from a hospital. One of my patients had a heart attack. And they said, we need to do an MRI. He's got a cochlear implant. We don't think we can do it. And with a couple phone calls through our customer service, sure enough, he had the synchrony. I said, take his device off and put him through the MRI machine. Flawless, simple, no big deal. What happens when you need an MRI and you don't have the MRI technology of Medel? What happens? Well, you need to schedule an MRI. Then you got to schedule to get that magnet removed. And that is just a tiny, possibly like in the office surgery, but they do make a slit and they take that magnet out. Then you get your MRI. You get another mini surgery where you put the magnet back in. Then you have to heal. And then once that's all healed, you can start wearing the processor again. All of this right here while you're not hearing sound. So with Medel, you plan your MRI. And you get your MRI. That's it. And so this is something that has been a really, a really big deciding factor for people who want to have sound access but don't want to forfeit any other types of scans or medical diagnostics. So no surgery removal needed, no discomfort, no hearing downtime for 3.0 Tesla. We have a saying at Medel where we say, you get the whole piano. <laughs> and um, it definitely begs to be explained because um, when we talk about the piano, we're talking about the cochlea and the way the cochlea is designed. So again, here is a, here's a more colorful picture of the cochlea. And if you can imagine that this part of the cochlea is responsible for high frequency sounds, okay? So you have hair cells here that are responsible for high frequency sounds. In a normal hearing ear, these are the first hair cells to go. That's why it's harder for us to hear high frequencies. That's why it's harder for us to hear whispers. That's why it's harder for us to hear and understand little kids because of this high frequency sound. And then as you go towards the apex of the cochlea, it becomes more speech sounds all the way to these low frequency sounds. So if you were to unroll this cochlea, it would be a lot like a piano where you have your low frequencies and your high frequencies and everything in between. With Medel's technology and Medel's electrode, we have the longest electrode array. That means we can cover the entire length of the cochlea and all of those little electrode contacts can go ahead and give stimulation in the area where your cochlea and your brain is ready to receive it. So 
it's not just about hearing and getting access to sound. It's trying to mimic the most natural sound access possible. And that's the philosophy of Meadow. Okay. I love this slide because, you know, I've traveled to other places where I talk about waterware, waterproofing your device and swimming, and they're looking at me like, we don't need that. Denver, Colorado could care less about waterproofing their device. But you guys live here in beautiful California, so close to the beach that I have to, I mean, I'm, I have to make sure that I'm driving, you know, right by the beach just so that I can make, make sure my social media says I was in California. So this is something that Medel takes very seriously, again, for the end user to allow you to experience hearing in all environments. And so with any of our devices, a waterware um, system and a waterware cover is available. So uh, in those times where you're enjoying the beach or you're enjoying the pool, any sort of water sports, you'd be able to have a completely waterproof processor. And that's what that looks like. This picture was probably taken here in your backyard. This is probably the most exciting news that we have. Um, this right here is called the Rondo 2. Um, it is a single unit processor. So do you remember the slide that I showed you? Hold on, let me just go back a couple slides. Here, this right here, every single cochlear implant processor is going to have a magnet, a processor, and a battery. So if you morph all of that into one, this Rondo, the first iteration of it that was created five years ago, is a processor, a magnet, and batteries. So it's a wearing option. It's, it, it sits right at the magnet site, and you have nothing on your ear. So for people who wear glasses, for people who just don't really want to have anything on their ear, many of you have used hearing aids maybe for many years or all of your life, but there are some people who go deaf overnight, and so they don't have that ability to acclimate to something behind their ear. This has been something that they've really liked and they've really appreciated. So moving forward five years later, Medel came out with the Rondo 2. The way they created the Rondo 2 was strictly feedback. They asked the recipients, not the shareholders, because we don't have any, not the surgeons, not the audiologists, they asked the recipients, what can we do to change this to make your life better? Well, one of the things was they said, could you make it look prettier? <laughs> please, please. So as you can see, with this next iteration, not only do they make it look prettier because you can have some covers, but the covers can also include um, things that look like hair. It looks just like it matches your hair. And so when I've seen this on someone and it's been their hair color, it's like, where's Waldo? I can't even find it. So that's just been really nice. The other thing, too, is that it is a lot sleeker. It almost looks like, you know, a high-end spaceship or something like that. Okay. One of the things they said was, you know, it's really hard to open and close batteries, people with um, dexterity issues and things like that. And so, again, Medel coming to the forefront with an innovation that is the first of its kind. This has no batteries. It's an integrated battery that sits on a charging dock and carries 18 hours of use. So every night you put it on the charging dock and then you wear it during the day. A waterware, um, waterproofing system will also be available with it. And so it's very exciting to, ha to bring forth this kind of innovation um, for the end user in mind. 
and this is a current promotion that we have right now. How many of you have ever purchased something like an iPhone or something or a television only to find out that the following month a new system, is that an Apple Watch, sir? <laughs> He's holding up his Apple Watch. Only to find out that the next month there was a new system. And you're like, oh darn. I would have waited had I known. So when Medell announced that the Rondo 2 was FDA approved, but it wasn't ready for the market yet, many people started thinking, I'll just wait. I'll just wait five more months. I'll just wait six more months. Medell believes if you need access to sound, you get it and you get it now and we'll take care of the rest. And so for right now, the promotion we have is anyone who chooses Medel automatically gets a free Rondo 2 processor. That way, there won't be any regrets about choosing something too soon or, you know, too soon for the market, okay? Wireless connectivity. I love everything that Tony says about wireless connectivity and just assistive listening device. Um, I have such an appreciation for the passion that she has to make sure that you understand how to access better sound in your environment. And for Medell, the technology is fantastic. I have seen people, you know, answer the phone just by picking it up. Uh, I've seen people, um, you know, function without a lot of wireless connectivity, but in times when they need it, it's definitely something that they take advantage of. And so for our system, we have an open platform. Um, and that means that you're not locked in to only using a certain kind of um, neck loop, a certain kind of FM system, a certain kind of hearing aid. Digital, wi digital, digital wireless streaming, Bluetooth connectivity, and state-of-the-art telecoil can all happen with something like the Roger Pen or the, phone, uh, the Oticon systems, Comfort Audio, Clear Sounds. So it's an open system. But in our activation kits, we provide the Roger Pen system. Is anyone here familiar with the Roger Pen system? I know Tony is, she's, she's a pro. So first of all, the Roger Pen is actually not a pen. You cannot write with it. When I was looking, I was packing for one of my trips, and I said, kept on saying out loud, I can't find my Roger pen. And my kids say, you give your pens names now? So, no, I'm not that crazy yet. Um, so, but what, the reason why they call it a pen is that it is discreet, like it's a pen that you can stick in your pocket. But this allows you to combat the, the difficult environments to listen in. And, and in my line of work, I found that there are three difficult environments. Large crowds, like restaurants, right? The phone, it's so hard for me to hear on the phone. And television, it's so hard for me to hear the television. With the Roger system, you can use, you can use this to combat all three of those. In a large crowd, this pen right here, oops, let me go back one. This pen right here is like a, it's a microphone. You can put it in some sort of like interview mode where you point it at the person that is talking. And when the microphone adjusts, you will hear them through your device as if they were standing right next to you. Okay? Um, as a transmitter, as a transmitter, you're able to pair this with your cell phone, and then your phone calls will go directly to your device. And then there's also a TV stand where you can pair it with your television, you can connect it to your television, sit and watch TV, and maybe you would be the only one that could hear the television, and because it, it will go straight to your device as well. And the way it goes straight to your device with the Medel system is this battery sleeve. This battery sleeve actually has an integrated receiver right there. So it's nice and discreet, and you just wear the battery sleeve when you are using the, the Roger Pen device. So this comes 
in your activation kit, no questions asked. It's like we know that you would want, once you get up and going with your cochlear implant, you want to experience um, the phone and things like that, you're able to use that as well. We chose the Roger system because it's something that we had heard, oh man, <laughs> I'm not doing too good here, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, so we chose the Roger system because we know that it's one of the best, high quality, um, good sound um, in, in FM systems. And they really, really have it right. So we partnered with them. We didn't make our own. We didn't start from scratch or anything like that. We just partnered with them. And lastly, when you are looking at a cochlear implant device, you know, I talked earlier about being married to that company. It really is like being married to that company. Whatever internal device you have, the upgrades that are going to be coming in the future, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, um, will be that company's device. And so with Medel, the backwards compatibility has been huge. We've had people who were implanted 20 years ago in our clinical studies, and they have been able to upgrade to the newest technology. No extra surgery needed, nothing. They're able to just say, oh, there's a new device out, now I can wear it. Their compatibility is spotless. And of course, customer service, in a world of customer service being press one, beep, press two, beep, and then you're trying to, when they tell you like, say what, say what your concern is, and you have to like talk to a computer, when you call Medel, you get a live voice every single time. 24 and 7, 365 days a year. And if you want to test me on this, test me on this Friday at 3 p.m. Because I guarantee if you have a device, that's when something's going to happen to it. <laughs> right? It happens each and every time. And so these are the supports that are in place. How am I doing, Tony? I know it's 3 o'clock and... Okay. You're doing just fine. Okay. I would like to run through just a few slides on listening therapy. I think this is something that everybody can benefit from, if that's okay. And then I will, you know, sing you a lullaby or something like that, because I've got the microphone already. So part of my role being a deaf educator um, in my past is to really let people know that no matter what device you have, if you have a hearing aid, if you have a cochlear implant, just getting that technology is the first step to a very long journey. There are still things that you can do that will help you be a better listener and a better user of your device. And that's called auditory training, okay? And so it doesn't matter whether or not you've just been activated or you've had your implant or your hearing aids for a long time, you can continue to make progress with your listening skills as long as you put in some dedicated time and effort as well. I always like to do these, these four, the four P's to everything. It's practice, partner, predictability, and progress. So when I talk about dedicated time to practice, some people just say, I wear my device and that's it. You know, I just wear my device. Um, and wearing your device all day, every day is great, but taking time to do some really good seated practice is really important as well. I liken it to um, a football linebacker. A football linebacker has a job and it looks a certain way, right? But then during the week, you see him in the weight room lifting weights. And that looks like, does that have, what does that have to do with, your, with this job? But it does. It helps strengthen the, the bigger picture. And so having some practice listening activities is very important. So it's not just going up to someone and say, well, what did you hear? You know, like, uh, no, that's, that's, just, that's just stressful, right? It's that you and your practice partner are sitting next to each other and it's a quiet environment and you are listening, actively listening for sentences or phrases or words a little at a time. 
I always say partner because I hear a lot of people say, oh, I, I listen to books on tape. And I just listen to NPR, or I listen to you know the radio or television. And I think all of that is great exposure to sound, but a live partner is best. And the reason why is you want to have an increased appreciation for listening with people in large crowds or even in small dinner parties. You want to make sure that you're listening for live speech as best as possible. You're also able to control the volume and the rate that they're going. You can tell them to, can you speak up a little bit? Or can you slow down a little bit? And you cannot necessarily do that when you're listening to a book on tape without having it sound a little bit distorted. The familiar voice is best because when we get a cochlear implant or when we get a hearing aid, we want to be able to hear our loved ones better whether it's our grandkids or our kids or our husbands and wives. So predictability is a big thing. When you are sitting with your partner and you're about to practice, instead of just saying, I'm going to say something and then you tell me what you hear, that's really difficult. So it's too much to choose from when we just start talking and then we have to figure out what it is that we heard. You have to give choices, making answers predictable so that it builds confidence. So here is some samples of predictable listening. Names of people in your family, colors of the rainbow, common streets in your town. If you have someone that's an avid golfer, maybe do golf golfer phrases, um, baseball phrases, things like that, okay? I really like um, things your waitress may say to you because we get so stressed out when we are in a restaurant and we get so used to having someone order for us or answer for us. If, if with just a little practice, you know, really trying to key in on what a waitress may say to you in the beginning of your meal, at the middle of your meal, and at the end of your meal. What it is you... So... These are just some activities that I've done with oh, larger groups. Wonderful. Okay, got to go. Oh. <laughs> she's coming through our she's coming through our system. <laughs> and then of course there's progress. I've never met even the best cochlear implant recipient that I've ever met. I've never ha heard them say, "I'm I'm done with practicing. I'm good. I've mastered it. You know, I've reached the pinnacle." Never cuz guess what? There's always a way you can make it a little bit harder. If you've mastered it in live voice, maybe you can go to a Starbucks and try that same activity with just a little bit of noise. How do you do when the cappuccino maker is on? Do you have to bust out all of your um, Roger Penn device? Or can your brain overcome those sounds? And can through contextual cues, can you understand those things as well, OK? Um, increasing the amount of information. If someone can easily understand a sentence, maybe you can move to paragraphs, okay? Changing the speaker from someone that's familiar to someone that's not so familiar. And then my go-to is, if you're doing really great in all of these settings, let's do this activity over the phone. Let me give you a call, and let's see how much you understand over the phone. <coughs> and then I just want to end by showing that there's a scaffolding to listening, okay? And, and I think no matter where you are, you can, you can use this scaffolding, whether or not you want to make, it easy, make something easier or make things harder, you know, to slow down, to speed up, letting the listener see your mouth, sitting next to the listener, sitting closer, sitting farther away, and things like that. Are there any questions? Oh, okay. We have questions, and I think we need the microphone. I am at the end of my presentation. I'm sorry. I know I promised you a song, but. 